classifying numbers. So this is the first uh, note sheet in this unit. Um, <clears throat> so basically we are reviewing all the number systems and classifying numbers in the real number um, system. So uh, let's take a look at the first part. When, when was the first time you heard about numbers? You probably learned to count from 1 to 10 at a very early age, but since then you have encountered a variety of different types of numbers. List some examples of all the different types of numbers you have seen. Search your memory hard for some of the more obscure ones. So I'm sure you've seen, well I know you've um, dealt a lot with uh, integers, fractions, that kind of thing. You've talked about uh, numbers like pi. Pi is an irrational number. Um, maybe you've heard about, so that's a little bit different one, obviously fractions, uh, sorry, integers, fractions, uh, decimals, uh, repeating decimals, um, this is irrational. You may have heard of uh, a number E. That's also irrational. You learn. You will learn about that um, in grade 12 math. Um, yeah. So those maybe are some of the different ones that you can um, you've, you've uh, seen. Now, actually, speaking of irrational, square roots too. So square root of five, for example. Square root of 4 would be, is equal to 2, so that is not irrational. These three are irrational, these are all rational. And that's what we're going to get into in this uh, lesson. So math groups numbers into various types. Here's how mathematicians classify numbers. So you'll notice some um, notations here. So these are your natural numbers in Alberta education. Actually, I'm going to switch this to blue. Alberta education and Canadian education, uh, we use N for natural numbers. Okay, so when you write the diploma exam in your grade 12 course, that's the, the notation that we'll use. IB uses this notation, so this is IB. Okay, um, so why is that Z? Well, if you look down here in IB notation, which is more, um, this comes from other parts of the world, and namely Europe, I think uses Z for uh, integers. Um, so if Z is for all integers, natural numbers are all the positive ones. So that's why they put the little plus there. Okay, so just be aware. Whole numbers are naturals with a zero in it, and if you think about, um, I always think about how I remember this, zero has a hole in it, not the right, not spelling, but an actual hole in the center, and so that's how I remember that they are whole numbers, kind of the little trick. Um, so. In Alberta education, makes sense. It's a W, so N for naturals, W for whole numbers, I for integers. Um, but now IB, they use N for whole numbers. And probably, again, it comes from a different language or something. Maybe N is the first letter. In any case, you do need to, to remember that. Integers in Alberta integers in IB curriculum. Okay, um, so integers have all the whole numbers and now all the negative natural numbers. Okay, uh, rational numbers is Q no matter what. Probably comes from the word quotient uh, is the answer when you divide. So Q for rational in both Alberta and IB curriculum. And that's the set of all numbers that can be expressed as a fraction where A and B are integers and the denominator is not zero. So rationals include all of these. Okay, it's, um, it's includes all fractions like two thirds, negative 14, 17 over four that don't reduce, but you can show 
For example, here, negative 5 over 1 is negative 5. That's a fraction made up of integer uh, numerator and denominator, and we get an integer answer. So integers are part of rational numbers. Um, sometimes you will see Q with a plus. That's the set of positive rational numbers. You don't end up seeing that very often. Then irrational numbers, no matter which Alberta or IB, is Q with a bar over top. Sometimes I have seen it with Q with a um, prime symbol, but uh, for what we're doing, it's Q with a bar, okay? Um, so that's the set of all numbers that cannot be expressed as a fraction, where A and B are integers and the denominator um, B is not zero, okay? So you can't end up with um, showing it as a fraction, and that really means they are non-repeating or non-terminating decimals when you show them as a decimal. Okay, so that can't see a pattern that repeats. Root 12, 12 is not a perfect square, so that's not going to be able to be simplified. Pi we already talked about. Um, cos of 30 degrees that's a trig um, that we're going to learn this unit and really that can be expressed as um, a fraction where one of the um, components the denominator is a uh, irrational number okay so that's how um, we know that the whole thing is and real numbers are again same for alberta and for uh, IB, that is all of the above. Basically, it's a union of the sets of rational and irrational numbers. Okay, the odd time you might see R plus, that's the positive real numbers. Okay, so let's do some work here. So note that all of the natural numbers are in the set of whole numbers, and all of the whole numbers are in the set of integers. For example, the number 4 is not only a natural number, but also a whole number and an integer. We say that the natural numbers is a subset of the whole numbers, which in turn is a subset of the integers. We can represent the relationship between the natural numbers and the whole numbers in the diagram below. Add to the diagram the set of integers. Okay, so here are your, your natural numbers. So these are your whole numbers. These are your natural and so, actually, I can do a box here, I think. Oh, that was a circle. <laughs> uh, I guess I have to choose this. I'll erase that in a sec. So there is box. Okay, and so that is um, the set of integers. So remember, for IB, it's a Z. And you'll notice back up here how they are bolded. Um, so when they're bolded, it's kind of hard to do bolding. You'll notice these aren't. You'll see I often do a double line, okay, which kind of makes it look bold, bolded. So it's always, so for N, I do a double line for the first vertical. For Z, I do a double line like that. That just means the set of integers, okay? So these are integers here. All right, so that is, we've added the set of integers. Okay, we're gonna come back to this in a sec. Let's go to the next part. The number four is not only a natural number, but also a whole number and an integer. Is the number 4 also a rational number? That is, can 4 be expressed as a fraction? If so, how? So yes, it can. So you can show 4 over 1, or you could show 8 over 2, or you could show um, 16 over 4, etc. Okay, there's many different ways of getting 4. Uh, I've just given you, you could do uh, 100 over 25. Okay, it doesn't have to be a multiple of, of two. Um, so, yep, that confirms that it is a um, whole number, uh, sorry, that it is irrational. We already knew that it's a uh, 
natural number, a whole number, an integer. Can every integer be expressed as a fraction? Yes, it can, because you can always um, remember the definition for that rational. These both have to be integers. So if our denominator, if we're trying to express an integer as a fraction, we can put it in the numerator and just put one in the denominator. Okay, so yes. Okay, is the set of integers a subset of the rational numbers? That is, is every integer also a rational number? Well, we just said yes here, so yes it is. Okay, based on the above. So go back to your diagram in question one and add the set of rational numbers. Okay, so I'm going to go back and then try to do a better job of this. Um, here. And there we go. It's going to be our rationals. Actually, I'm just going to move that a little bit like that. Like that. Okay, so that's Q. And so then I put a line on the left. Okay, so that's rational. All of these are part of the set of rational numbers. So we've done that. Okay, so rational numbers were described as fractions, but they can also be described in decimal form, since all fractions can be changed to decimals. How is this done? So for example, three-fourths. Remember how you, you probably know that, or you should know that that's 0 0.75. Okay, how do you get that? You divide. So you take the numerator and divide by the denominator. Okay. Convert the following fractions to decimals. So hopefully you know some of them. Two thirds. Remember, one third is 0.3 repeating. So two-thirds is double that, 0.6 repeating, okay? One-ninth, um, anything with a denominator of nine is going to basically be a multiple of one repeating. So if this is just a one here, it's going to be 0 0.1 repeating. If it was two-ninths, it would be 0 0.2 repeating, etc. Okay, this one might not know. I don't know it off the top of my head. So in your graphing calculator, or any calculator, I don't really need a graphing for this. Um, I'm just going to do the 7 over 11. Okay, so 7 divided by 11. And look for a pattern. So if there is one, but it should be, we know, because this is a fraction made up of integers. So it should either repeat or terminate. Okay, and it's pretty obvious here. So 0 0.63, 63, 63, 63. Notice how at the end it's 64. That's because the next digit, it really should be 636, and the calculator has rounded that up to a 4. Okay, so this is 3 plus 7 over 11. So you could actually, if you want to, just add 3 there. And so it's going to be 3.63 with a bar over the 63. Okay, so these are repeating decimals. Convert the following fractions to decimals. Um, again, same, same thing as, as above. So if you're not sure, like in my head, what I do here, try to use some mental math. 4 goes into 17 four times one remainder, so that's four and a quarter, so that's 4.25, okay? Um, three sixteenths, maybe you don't know that off, sometimes I have to check that one my, personally, myself. Um, so three divided by 16, right, 0 0.1875. Um, this one will be two decimal. And then remember three-fifths, I always think of, oh, okay, well, that's easy to get a denominator of 10. That would be six-tenths, so that's 2.6. 
Notice how none of these repeated. They're all terminating decimals. So how do these differ from those above? Um, these are terminating decimals. Okay, in summary, when a fraction is changed to a decimal, the decimal either repeats or terminates. Use your patterning skills to determine the 50th digit of the decimal expansion of 1 over 13. So this should be a bit of a review. Not that you have to do this very often, but let's figure out what 1 divided by 13 is. Okay, so 1 divided by 13, 0 0.076923, and then I see a 0769. So these are all repeating, even the zero, okay? Um, so let's think about how many digits are there here. So there's six digits, and we want to find the 50th digit. So if you think about, we've got six digits, and then another six digits. So basically, how many sixes go into 50 without going over, okay? well. 8 times 6 is 48, okay? So really what we're doing here, just expand this out, is 50 divided by the 6 repeating digits. 8 goes into that with a remainder of 2. So that means um, basically here we'll get to 6, and there will have been 8 of these. And then we'll have two digits uh, of the next set of repeats. So we have to look for the second digit, and that's a 7. Okay, so this would be 0, 7. So I'll uh, use your patterning seal. So the 50th digit is 7. Okay, let's take a look at the next part. Question five, the following are examples of irrational numbers. Use a calculator to express the last two in decimal form. So you can see there is a pattern, but it's not repeating. And we have dot, 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 so we don't know what comes. We're assuming, like, we can't assume anything um, because there's no pattern to know what's going to repeat. So we have to assume that it's not repeating. And then root 12... Um, let's get our calculator. Root 12 is, let's see, um, it doesn't say how many decimal places. So 3.46410161, etc. So although you might see some ones there, there's no repeat to it. And pi, remember, use the pi button in your calculator. Some of you will know a few digits of pi. So 3.14159265, etc. Still haven't found all the digits of pi. Um, if you ever meet Mr. Yanover, math teacher at Wisewood, or have him as a teacher, he knows. He can recite them really fast, like he knows a couple hundred of the digits off by the top of his head. So ask him about it. How do these decimals differ from those in question 3D? Uh, they neither terminate. Oh, sorry, 3D. I better just check what 3D is. Um, 3D. Uh, there isn't a 3D. Uh, I think it was 4D. So they do not repeat or terminate. So can a number be both rational and irrational? No. Because these are basically all the decimals that do not repeat or terminate. So it kind of fills in all those empty spaces. So go back to your diagram and add the irrational numbers to your diagram. Okay, so irrational, oops, page four, 
irrational will be entirely separate. So I can basically do a box here. Sorry, I will just uh, scan this out. There we go. Okay, I feel move it up a little bit. Close enough. Okay, so this is uh, irrational. So that's Q. Oh, Q with a, sorry, with a bar. Um, sometimes it is a prime, but we'll use a bar. And that's irrational. Okay, so it's separate from rational. Rational and irrational. And all of these together, this whole thing, is the real number system. All the real numbers. Okay, so let's go back and continue. So we've done this. And then it says, complete the following table. Put an X if the number belongs to the set. You may put as many X's as you need. In the last column, name the best number system. So often on a test, that's what we'll ask you. So basically, it's the most specific, so the innermost uh, number set on that diagram uh, that best describes it. So. Uh, remember natural numbers, so we're going to go through, I'm just going to put the notation here, so Z with a plus for IB, whole is N, integer is just Z, this is Q, this is Q the bar, um, okay, so not a natural number, not a whole number, an integer, and so basically these three are involved in rationals. These are separate. So you're never going to put an X in both of these. So integer is part of rational. So the best description is the most specific. And this goes from most specific to least in terms of rationals. The irrational would be separate. So this will be integer. I'll just use the notation. This is very similar to negative 2. So that's an integer, rational, integer. 9.2 is not going to fill in any of the, these first three because it's a decimal and it's terminating so it's rational and that's the best description of it. Two-thirds again won't be any of these first three. It's rational because um, it's made up of integer, numerator, and denominator so that's rational. Root 20 20 is not a perfect square, so that is going to be irrational. Okay, so that's the best set. And so, the, so you can see, it's either one side or the other of it. Root 9, always simplify your radicals. Sometimes we try to trick you, see if you know what they are. Um, and so root 3, uh, sorry, root of 9 is 3, which is a natural number. And which is a whole number, which is an integer, which is rational. So the most specific is the natural number. Then pi, we've already talked about that. That's irrational. As zero is not a natural number. It's a whole number. Remember, zero has a hole in it. So it's a whole number, which means it's an integer and rational. So the most specific is whole number. Negative four and one third. So it's negative, but it's got a fraction with it. So it's not an integer. So anytime there's a fraction, go to rational. Oops. So that's going to be rational. Then 28 is just a natural number. So natural, whole, integer, rational. Now, let's take a look here. One, two, one, two, one, two, dot, dot, dot. So if you can see a pattern and you've got dots afterwards, that means that's going to continue. So one, two, one, two, one, two means it's really, we should show that as 0.12 with a bar over top. So that's a repeating decimal. So that's rational. 
3.14, don't be tricked, there's nothing after it. So that is actually terminating. This is not pi. That's an approximation of pi. So this is a terminating decimal, which is rational. Next one, 4.25, 255, 2555. It's kind of got a pattern, but it's not a repeating pattern. The fives keep increasing. So that is irrational. Four point three repeating, just the three is repeating, but that's okay. Can be just three, and so that is rational. Sixteen over seven. That's a fraction made up of integers, so that's rational. Forty-eight over six. That is equal to eight. So it is rational just by looking at it, but more specifically, it's a natural number, whole number, integer, rational. Oh, what am I doing? Okay. And then it says all natural numbers are whole numbers, but not all whole numbers are natural numbers. Name the only whole number that is not a natural number. Well, the only difference is that zero, okay? Because uh, natural numbers start at one. So set brackets one, two, two, three, four, and go onwards in that patterning. And whole numbers start at zero, one, two, three. So all the same except for zero. Likewise, all whole numbers are integers, but not all integers are whole numbers. Name three integers that are not whole numbers. That would be negative. So let's say negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So what type of integers are these? These are negative. Okay. In the following diagram, shade in the section that represents all integers that are not whole numbers. So remember, these are whole numbers. These are integers. Oops, integer. Inte Let me spell that right. Just give me a sec. Okay, so shade in the section that re represents all integers that are not whole numbers. So that would be everything that's outside of the whole numbers. Okay. Uh, name a rational number that is not an integer. What type of rational numbers are not part of, of the integers? So a rational number that's not an integer would be something like two-thirds. What types of rational numbers are not part of integers? Um, well, they are fractions. I mean, they can be converted to decimals, but fractions that cannot be reduced to an integer. So basically, they don't have a common factor that can be reduced. So place the numbers in question 7 in the appropriate section in the diagram below. Okay, so that's all labeled. I'm just going to dual page so we can do this a little bit easier. Okay, so negative 2, that's just an integer, right? So if we take a look here, this will give us a hint to do it quickly. So negative 2, negative 16, um, 9.2. Uh, two-fifths, then root 20 would be over here, um, then root 9 is in the middle, it's a natural number, pi is irrational, 0 is a natural number, uh, negative four thirds. 
um, 28. And then 0 0.12, oh, um, let's move this down. So 0 0.12 repeating. Um, so that's, and we'll put that over here, 0 0.12, and I'll just use the repeating symbol. Uh, 3.14 is rational, then irrational, 4.25255255, etc. Um, then uh, 4.83 repeating, then 16 over 7. Then, oh, eight. Sorry, this one here, I had done the um, uh, rational, the most specific is natural. So, got to fix that. Okay, and so that's going to be 48 over 6. Okay, and... That's it for this lesson on classifying numbers.